All right, so bomb calorimeter. This is all about mixing hot substances with cold substances. And the big premise of this feature is that um, you will always have a flow of heat from a hot substance into a cold substance. This is the main premise why when you touch something that is considered hot, the reason why it feels hot is because all that heat is being transferred to your fingers, your palm, your hands. And if enough heat's being transferred in a short period of time, eventually you end up burning yourself, right? So, <laughs> yeah, you gotta be careful with that. All right, so, not that the experiment's gonna look exactly like this, but, you know, a proper bone calorimeter experiment contains a substance in an inner compartment. And the substances are, you know, are either about to be mixed with each other or they're already mixed with each other, but they need a little, in this case, spark to get started. So right here is a combustion process of methane with oxygen, which is a um, relatively, you know, highly uh, energy releasing process. It does require a tiny spark just to get it going. Um, and so what you do though, is that you have this flask uh, in, an, in a sealed compartment, but the compartment allows heat to flow you know, from the, you know, from the inside to the outside, from the outside to the inside. Uh, and that is actually submerged in a tank of water. That tank of water itself is contained within a much bigger um, container. But unlike the inner container, the outer container is um, impermeable to heat. It prevents the heat from exiting the chamber. And so whatever heat comes out of this inner compartment stays with not only within the compartment but also within the water and so the idea is that when you turn this on and you have a spark passing through the wire to get the combustion reaction going you start producing your products you release energy and at the very beginning the temperature inside the flask is going to be much larger than the temperature outside of the flask in the water pool and what happens is that the heat starts flowing from the hot compartment to the colder one so you have heat flow towards the water tank. And when this is happening, the temperature inside starts going down, while at the same time, the temperature outside in the tank starts going up. And this process continues and continues and continues until the temperature inside the inner tank equals the temperature in the outer tank. This is what we do refer to as thermal equilibrium. And the idea is that you are basically exchanging heat from the hot substance onto the cold and in equation format what this means is that the heat loss from the hot stuff is going to equal to the heat gained by the cold stuff so q hot equals negative q cold but because each q can be represented by mass times specific heat times change in temperature uh, ultimately you can rewrite these equations the following way and uh, not forgetting to include a negative in front of the second one all right, so this uh, is in regards to the system, aka the chemical or reaction in question. So let me show you how this goes. Now that's the most uh, convoluted example. Usually when it comes down to exchanging heat, all you really need is to have a hot substance coming in contact with a cold substance. It could literally be something as simple as adding ice to your drink, your drink being the hot substance and the ice being the cold substance. You're gonna have a heat exchange uh, a heat flow going from the drink into the ice, right? And that's why the, you know, the, your little drink will feel actually, you know, cold and and uh, flavorful. <laughs> All right, so here what we're doing is we're taking 10 grams of aluminum uh, that are being held at 75 degrees Celsius. Here. So you basically you put this in an oven um, and you heat it up up to a temperature of 75 degrees Celsius. And then you drop it in 100 ml of water, um, which starts at an initial temperature of 25 degrees Celsius. What we're trying to find out here is what is the final temperature of this mixture when thermal equilibrium is achieved. And what you need to know is that the aluminum has a heat capacity of 0.9 joules per gram degree Celsius, and the water has a heat capacity of 4.184. All right, so what's most important here is that we equate the hot, the heat coming from the hot substance going into the cold substance. So Q hot equals negative Q cold. 
and this means that we're going to once again deal with the mass times specific heat times the change in temperature equation for both ends. All right, now uh, the hot stuff in this case is the aluminum, and the way we know that that's the hot stuff is because its initial temperature is higher than the initial temperature of the second substance. All right, so we input all the values for the hot substance. We have 10 grams for aluminum. We have the heat capacity of 0 0.900 joules per gram degree Celsius for aluminum. Our initial temperature is 75. Now notice that here we don't know what the final temperature is. In fact, that's literally what I'm asking you to find. The final temperature, we don't know what it is, uh, but the final temperature we're guaranteed to have the same value for the cold as well as for the hot substance, because otherwise you haven't reached thermal equilibrium. So this final temperature has to be the same. Uh, the initial temperatures, however, will have to be different. You know, uh, if the hot substance has the higher temperature, the colder substance has a colder temperature. And 100 ml of water, because of the density of water, is the same thing as 100 grams of water. The heat capacity of water is 4.184, so we input that in here. And don't forget this negative sign. It seems like a really tiny, you know, minor thing, but it's very crucial for the calculation we're about to carry out. All right, so ultimately, if you look at that, if you look at it this way, you can divide grams from both sides, so the grams cancel out, and you can divide both sides by joules per gram degree Celsius, in which case all the units of M and C cancel out. All you will have will be degrees Celsius for this calculation. All right, so what I recommend that you do is that you multiply the 10 by the 0.9, that will give you 9, literally, and then distribute the 9 into the TF minus 75, which will give you 9 TF minus 675. Likewise, multiply negative 100 by 4.184, that will give you negative 418.4. Distribute that negative 418.4 into TF and negative 25. And keep in mind now that negative and positive gives you negative, negative and negative gives you positive. So, you know, pay attention to those signs. Uh, if you mess this up, this will unfortunately mess up the problem badly. In some cases, you'll get some ridiculous numbers that make absolutely no sense. So be careful with that distribution. All right, so now what you get to do is move all the terms that have TF to the same side. I would recommend that you uh, add 418.4 to both sides and that you add 675 to both sides to end up with the following relationship. And right here, all you need to do is divide both sides by 427.4 to find the value of the final temperature. Now the value that we got here is 26.1 and the one thing that is important to notice in respect to oops in respect to this number is that the 26.1 lies in between the initial temperatures. It's above 25 degrees Celsius but it is below 75. And it's not a prerequisite that it lies exactly in the middle of those two numbers but it has to be above the cold temperature and below the hot temperature. That's the requirement. If you ever get a final temperature that is below the cold temperature or above the hot temperature, you made a drastic mistake. Either you forgot to include the negative or you forgot to distribute the signs properly. Uh, but this final temperature has to be in between the initial temperatures for both the cold and the hot stuff. All right, let's do another example. Here we are taking 50 grams of water at 60 degrees Celsius and we're mixing it with water at 21 degrees Celsius. So from the point of view of the 21 degrees Celsius water, uh, the 60 degrees Celsius water is the hot water and the 21 will have to be the cold. But nonetheless, you're mixing a hot substance with a cold substance. So the same formula applies. Q hot equals negative Q cold. And so we still have M times C times change in temperature equals negative M times C times change in temperature. Uh, the, temp the, the mass of water is, is being given at 60 degrees Celsius, uh, it's 50 grams. The volume of water is given at 21, and since we weren't given any density data, we're going to assume that the density is 1 gram per ml, so we have 50 grams of water at 25 degrees Celsius. Uh, the two substances are water, liquid water, so you still deal with 4.184 for the both for the heat capacities of both. The only difference is that the initial temperature for the hot stuff is 60, the initial temperature for the cold stuff is 21. And of course you have to have the negative in front of the second Q just to make the math work out. So what I recommend that you do is that you multiply 50 by 4.184 and write down that number. 
multiply negative 50 by 4.184 and, and write down that number. And then distribute the number, which in this case is 209.2, into TF. So 209.2 times TF, 209.2 times negative 60. So you end up finding these values on the left side. And over here, you multiply negative 209.2, which is the negative 50 times 4.184, by TF. So that will give you negative 209.2 TF. And then multiply 209.2 by well, negative 209.2 by negative 21, giving you positive 4393.2. So like before, add 209.2 TF to both sides. Add 12,552 to both sides to find out uh, the following relationship. And finally, divide by 418.4 uh, on both sides to isolate TF. And in this case, you find out that the final temperature is 40.5. And once again, 40.5 lies above 21 but below 60, so it's in between the two temperatures, so this looks good. It looks like we did account for the negative at the beginning and we distribute the negative signs correctly. All right, let's do one more example and see how this uh, plays out all together. Uh, this is a little bit more complicated. We have 10 grams of copper at 60 degrees, 15 grams of aluminum at 80, and we're mixing this with 100 ml of water at 75 and 75 ml of water at 18 degrees Celsius. So we want to find out what's the final temperature of all of this. And what needs to be said is that you have two substances that are a higher temperature than the waters. So the waters are basically your cold stuff, the copper and the aluminum are going to be your hot stuff. All right, so Q hot equals negative Q cold. Um, you're going to have M times C times change in temperature equals negative M times C times change in temperature. But for the hot stuff, you actually have two things, as I was mentioning. You have the 10 grams of copper times the specific heat capacity of copper that is shown right here, 0.385, times the change in temperature, T final minus the initial temperature of copper, which was 60. At the same time, you have 50 grams of aluminum. The heat capacity of aluminum is 0.903, so we input that in there. And the initial temperature of aluminum was 80, so we have TF minus 80. And all of this is the hot stuff. Likewise, the cold stuff, we have, um, what is it, 100 ml of water, so that's about 100 grams of water, times the heat capacity of water, which is 4.184, times the change in temperature. And the initial temperature of water was 15 degrees Celsius. Now, the only thing you have to be careful about is not to forget to include that negative sign in front of your Q cold. And speaking of Q cold, we have another amount of water, 75 ml at 18 degrees Celsius. So we have the negative 75 uh, grams of water times the heat capacity of water, 4.184, times the change in temperature, TF minus 18, 18 being the initial temperature for the second batch of water. And also, don't forget to have the negative in front. Now, aside from the fact that you have four things present, the procedure is still the same. Multiply 10 by 0.385, multiply 15 by 0.903, multiply negative 100 by 4.184, and multiply negative 75 by 4.184. And write down those numbers. All the units are going to cancel out except for your degrees Celsius. And then what you do is 10 times 0.385 is 3.85. Distribute that into TF and negative 60 to get 38.5 TF minus 23.10. For the second uh, portion of the Q hat, you have 15 times 0.903, which is 13.55. Distribute the 13.55 to TF and negative 80 to get 13.55 TF and negative 10.83.6. Over on the right side, negative 100 times 4.184 is negative 418.4. Distribute that into TF, you have negative 418.4 TF. And distribute that to negative 15, you'll have positive 6276. Likewise, 70, negative 75 times 4.184 is equal to negative 313.8, which if you distribute into TF, you get negative 313.8 TF. And distribute that negative number into negative 18, you'll get positive 5648.4. All right, so what you need to do is bring all the TFs to the left side. So add 418.4 TF to both sides and add 313.8 uh, TF to both sides. And also 
at 23.10 to both sides and 1083.6 to both sides. So you're going to end up ultimately with values, right? So you'll have your TFs completely. So here, apparently what I did is I added them together to kind of make it a little bit easier. But ultimately, you bring all the TFs to the same side, as you can see here. Bring all the TFs to the same side, you're going to end up ultimately with 784.25 TF on the left side. Bring all the non-TFs numbers to the right side, you'll end up with 15,318. And here, all that needs to be done is divide both sides by 784.25. And you find out that the final temperature is 18.5. And now, going back to the initial temperatures. Okay, so the, the warmest cold temperature was 18. And the value we're getting for TF is still higher than that. So that's looking good. In addition, the coldest warm temperature was the, you know, between 60 and 80. The coldest one is 60. 19.5 is indeed below 60. So you're now in between the innermost temperature ranges. So this actually looks pretty good. And aside from the fact that we had four things being combined together, the procedure was still the same. Hot substances were yielding heat onto the cold substances. All right, so that, that's it for this lecture. I know that this last uh, video was a little bit more convoluted with the calculations, but hopefully you were able to follow along. And in case you're having trouble with this, make sure to ask questions during office hours. Uh, all that being said, see you in the next lecture series.